please put your hands together for this man, Sean Whalen. responsible for our ability to sleep freely, to carry guns as we choose, to be able to eat where we want to eat, do what we want to do. So uh, thank you again, Braxton, for that. Um, my friends, we have been programmed, you and I, you and I as parents, today are programming our children to be liars. We're programming an entire herd, an entire society, an entire generation of sheep Sit down, quiet down. These little five, six, seven year olds, we're putting in these, these square concrete boxes, telling them to shut up and do as they're told, when all an eight year old wants to do is run around and play and be creative, and when he goes outside of the box, what do we then do? We pop pills in his throat to get him to get back in the box. Now here's what's fascinating. I'm 38 years old. What I've noticed as I've traveled the country and traveled the world is that most people, are not happy. Most people are not happy. I don't know why. Little kids, we do as we're told. We grow up, we grow up, we grow up, and we turn into teenagers. Do as you're told, do as you're told. Get the job, do the deal. Find a beautiful woman. Settle down and get a white picket fence. Crank out a couple of kids, get the gold watch, and say la vie. How many people are enjoying that? Prescription drug usage is an all-time high. Men are three and a half times more likely to commit suicide than women. 58% of all marriages are ending in divorce. How happy are we? How stoked are we as a society? Are we happy? What are we teaching our kids? To do what? Get in the box. And if they're outside the box, they're crazy. Just march along, sheep. And what I'm finding and what you're probably hearing right now is, is you're, you're literally seeing what's happening in our society. How many of you watch the news? How many of you see what's going on? Is it fair to say that our society is angry? Yes, no? Yeah. Yes? Is it fair to say that, that there's a lot of disconnect? Is it fair to say that we as a society are trying to figure out whether or not we want to be sheep or whether or not we want to be a lion. What I find is through, through my consulting and my coaching and most of my clients is that I get these middle-aged men, 25, 35, 45 year old men who are saying, I've got the house, I've got the car, I've got the family, I've got the kids, why am I not stoked? Why am I not happy? Do any of you resonate with this? Have you ever felt like this? The reality is, my friends, we are being raised, our society is raising a generation of sheep. We are teaching our children to be sheep. We're supporting a system that's teaching our children to be sheep. I'd have you consider for a second, my friends, if, if you look around, you have an option. I have the option every single day as we wake up to do one of two things. To stay inside the box that's not producing the happiness that we want. To stay inside the box it's not giving us the results that we want. Or step outside and chart our own territory. There's a guy named Donald Trump. You guys have heard of him, right? How many of you voted for him? Yes. How many of you voted for Hillary? Exactly. You vote in the right spot. If you look at what's happening, my friends, if you look at what's happening right now, there's a pendulum shift. For the last 50, 60 years, we have had this insane epidemic in our society of telling people to shut the hell up. Don't say what you want to say. Don't be who you want to be. Don't do what you want to do. Why? Because Aunt Sally comes over for Thanksgiving and she's a Hillary fan. So don't say anything. You just talk about the turkey and talk about the jelly and the crescent rolls and all will be well. Don't put a sign in your front yard because the neighbors might get pissed off. Don't write that Facebook post about the passion that you feel for our children, for our growth, for our advancement, because your uncle might read it, your sister might read it, your dad might read it, and it might make them upset. 
And who at the end of the day is the most frustrated? Who at the end of the day is dealing with the most resentment and pain? Who at the end of the day wants to get the hell outside of this box and live the life that they want to live? Who is it? It's us. We're literally living lives, my friends, packaged inside of these boxes to make other people feel okay. Does that sound normal to you? Does that sound acceptable to you? How is it that this man named Donald Trump won? This is not a political conversation, okay? But most of you support him, so we can talk about it. How is it that he won? How is it that he was able to do what he did? How is it that he had significantly less funding than his competitors? Do you want to know what he did that no one else was willing to do? Do you want to know what separates him? Do you want to know what separates the lion from the sheep? Do you want to know how he won by such a massive landslide? It wasn't just because of social media. It wasn't because I did some cool videos with him and his son and everybody else. Do you want to know what he did that most people on this planet are not willing to do right now? He told the fucking truth. So there's a reason that I made this lighthouse a permanent fixture in my body. Because I realized about a year and a half ago after I went through a midlife crisis, a divorce, a, a meltdown, if you will, at 31 years old, that I only have one option every single day. You only have one option every day. It's to shine your light. Tell the truth. We're terrified to tell the truth. Why? Because Aunt Sally might not come back next Thanksgiving. <laughs> Heaven forbid. Because her neighbors might get pissed off and think we're weirdos. My friends, there is an epidemic happening right now across the land. And it's the fact that we're perpetuating this lie that we're okay. This lie that this will sustain. I'd have you consider for a second the most powerful weapon that you have, the most powerful experience that you can have in this life is to tell the damn truth. What do you want? What do you feel? I'm writing a book right now, and the title of it is Your Mess is Your Message. Because what happened to me a few years ago is I was really angry, I was really bitter. I went through a nasty divorce, went through kind of this midlife crisis. I was the guy. I was the guy that I'm talking about. I had the house, I had the car, I had a flourishing business, and I woke up one day, I'm like, this sucks. What's the problem? And so I burned it all to the ground. And I went through two years of self-discovery, whatever the hell you want to call it, trying to figure out how I fit into this entire thing, what my reason was for living. And what I realized is I had built everything for other people. I had done everything that I had done for other people because it made mom happy, dad was happy, the in-laws were stoked because their daughter was taken care of and had a big house and cars and the whole thing. Everybody was happy, except you, me. And so I decided to write this book and what I'm realizing, my friends, is that those of you who have made a mistake, how many of you have made a mistake before? You've never made a mistake? Raise your damn hands. Come on, we're in a small room. I'm really embarrassed. Oh, let me here. How many of you have made a mistake? How many of you have done some really dumb kids and us? Some really dumb shit? How many of you have done some really stupid crap? Cool. You're in good company. How many of you are willing and open to talk about it? Lots, lots less hands. My friends, let me share something with you as I, as I conclude here. You have no idea who you can affect. You have no idea right now how powerful your story is. This man who was the cartoon character, this man who had, had all of these black marks in his past, literally just ruined the highest office of the land by doing one thing, telling the truth. He didn't care what you thought, or you thought, or you thought. It's what he thought, it's what he felt. I'd have you consider, my friends, that those of you that have ever made a mistake, that is your message. That is your message. You and I aren't afraid to make mistakes, are we? How many of you are afraid to make a mistake? You've all done it. We're like seasoned professionals in making mistakes. Is that, is that fair to say? How many of you screwed up more than one time? Me, 100 times. We're like professionals at screwing stuff up. We're professionals at making mistakes. Are you afraid to make a mistake? No. 
You want to know what you're afraid of? You want to know what 99.99% of people are afraid of? What are they afraid of? Failure. Nah. You've already failed. You're a pro at failing. What are you afraid of? Judgment. You're afraid of what happens if I go outside of that box? What happens if I do this? What happens if I live the life I want to live? What happens if I say the things that I want to say to my significant other? What happens if I declare how I feel? Someone might say it's weird. Somebody might say it's odd. And I'm afraid of that. I'm more afraid of not living my life. I'm more afraid of laying on my deathbed knowing that God put things in here and in here that I squandered because I was worried about you. I'm deathly afraid of laying on my deathbed. I probably won't. I'll probably die in a car crash doing 200 miles an hour in my stupid truck in the woods or something. I'm deathly afraid of, of knowing that God put things in here and in here. And I was more afraid of you than I was living my damn life. How many of you have passion? How many of you have dreams and ideas and goals and things that you want to do? Go do it. Go do it, because I promise you, as the Almighty is my witness, there will come a time that you will be laying on a bed, or you will be in some place, and you will be thinking, why did I not do that? Why did I not say that? Why did I not share that with my children? Why did I not tell them my deep, dark secrets? Why did I not tell my significant other how I really feel? My single greatest fear is dying, knowing that I have a heart full and brain full of ideas, and I squandered it because I was worried about you. My friends, we have one crack at this life. As you heard, our ticket might be punched tomorrow. My question for you is, are you living the truth? Have you told the truth? Does your significant other know it? Have you told people what you feel? Are you waking up every single day with rage and vigor and excitement? If not, why? There's not a damn person stopping you other than you. No one is going to stop you. No one's going to stop you from telling the truth tomorrow. No one's going to stop you from waking up and starting a company tomorrow. No one's going to stop you from doing whatever the hell you want to do tomorrow. Nobody is going to do it. Except you. Your choice. My friends, tell the truth. The ticket to liberation, the ticket to freedom, the ticket to wealth, the ticket to happiness is found in the truth. It's hard. It's frustrating. Aunt Sally might not come back. She might not come back to Thanksgiving. You might not get a Christmas card from her. But how do you feel? Free. Free. Get the hell out of the box. There will come a point in time that you will wish that you had. My friends, shine your light. Tell the truth. In every single place that you go, in every single thing that you do, you will piss people off, you will lose friends. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. But I would far rather live free, as a free man, with a free mind and a free soul, than encumbered by what you think of me. Thank you very much.